God is so tender with infertility. Mm -hmm. And so whether you don't feel called or you haven't been biologically able, or like me, you miss the window because there are just things in your life that took a long time to heal, I, I think that tends to be almost like the scarlet letter A. Hey everyone, get in here. This is the perfect time for you to be here because this is Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast where Joyce shares the Word of God in her practical, no-nonsense way that we all love. And my friends and I talk about the real stuff of living it every day and we don't hold anything back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Jay and Aaron Cluley, three friends who are all in very different stages of life, and we're gonna talk about that a lot today, who understand the importance of having Mm. honest, loving women around you. When we need a little extra help, we call up our friend, Miss Joyce, because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us. Get on in here, because today (laughs) we also have our beautiful friend, Lisa Harper Yay! with us. Yay! So happy. Yeah. So happy. So happy. We're so I excited. I feeling so sorry for the person who saw me out of the corner of their eye and thought, oh, yay, Miss Joyce is there. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, but I'm so happy to be with you. <laughs> that's, that's kind of my life. Is that? <laughs> yeah. Just oh, that you're not Joyce. Just that deep disappointment when they realize <laughs> exactly. you're not Joyce. is like, no, so I'm close. not Joyce. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what we're doing today is is going to be, I think, really deep and important, but also a lot of fun because you can't help but have fun with this group. That's true. And it is for everybody. We're talking about the heart of a woman today. Mm. So we're going to talk about the desires that God puts in our hearts and how those are met and how sometimes it feels like maybe they're not being met. So we're going to talk about moms and Real life situations and disappointments and a lot of things that many of you may be going through. Yeah. So I, let's awesome. just start, Lisa, if you don't mind, mm-hmm. fill everybody in on your path to motherhood. Will you path do that? Path to motherhood. Yeah, it was a bumpy one. <laughs> um, I am, I'm 58. I just turned 58 yesterday. Aww, so I am 58 birthday. Happy now. birthday. Thank you. Hey, it was you know, a, it was me a too. good one. High five. Me too. Oh, are, we, are you? You're not 58. I am 50. We are what the same are you age. Taking? I need whatever you're taking. You look great. Um, Your skin has more elasticity than mine. Um, (laughs) The reason I say my age is my daughter's just 12. And so I became a mom at the age of 50 through the miracle of adoption. I was telling a friend recently, because she, she just sees my life now, and she's like, your life is so fulfilled and you seem so happy. And I was like, you know, I've, I, I've, God has been so good. My whole mm-hmm. life, He's been good. But I was just thick as a brick in my 20s and 30s, and I don't mean in the Commodore's kind of way. (laughs) Um, I just was really, really broken. Um, There's some molestation in my background. And so I was really drawn to abusive men. And God protected me from the guys I was most attracted to. And the few good, godly guys I dated, God protected them from me because I was hot mess express. And so by the time I got to my 40s and God had healed kind of the deepest roots of toxicity, you know how you can know Jesus as your Savior, but you don't yet know Him as liberator? Oh, oh, Uh, of course. I just lived there for a long time. So I knew... I knew I needed him to deliver me for my sins. I'd walk the aisle and gave my heart to Jesus when I was a little kid. I just didn't think he liked me very much. Mm -hmm. I I carried shame for a really, really long time. And so by the time I got to my 40s, I'm not saying I was perfectly fixed, but I think the deepest roots of that brokenness he had so graciously and uh, redemptively pulled out. But I realized... I'm not going to be a mom because at that point, I don't know if you can say this on on talk it out, but my ovaries were raisins, yeah. and so you're I thought, very welcome we to say that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We'll talk about ovaries, yeah. yeah. We talk about all that stuff. Um, we talk about raisins okay. too. <laughs> Raisin, get, get, I'm so glad because it's in Leviticus, <laughs> it's Song of Solomon. Um, but of I people. thought, you know, I know God isn't capricious, but. I'm just not going to get to be a mom because I sabotaged so mm-hmm. many decades when I shoulda, woulda, coulda either been adopting or had a child of my own or married. And So talk about that shame. It seems like a huge there was even shame. false shame with that aspect huge of your shame. life. There's even shame in it. And I don't, 
I really don't want to say anything that's unkind or sounds bitter, but I do think unwittingly the church makes an idol out of motherhood and mm-hmm. out of marriage. Absolutely. And I, I can't tell you agree. how many times mm-hmm. that I would walk into a church and just go, oh, crud. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't fit in this place. And I love the church. I love yeah. the bride of Christ. I just didn't always feel like I was welcome there. Yeah. No one was unkind. It was, again, I think most of the time it was just a a subconscious thing. I remember one Mother's Day, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, one Mother's Day, um, I walked into church and there were little kids, beautiful little pumpkins, carrying those flat kind of Martha Stewart baskets, you know, that you collect Mm -hmm. roses in or daisies. Mm -hmm. They were at each of the entrances as you walked in the sanctuary Mm -hmm. and they were holding these daisies. And as you walked past, these pumpkins would go, are you a mother? And then, Aww. you know, if you said yes, they'd hand you uh, a daisy. And all the women I was around were like, yes, oh, thank you, honey, that's so sweet. And they'd walk in. And I thought, do I lie right. <laughs> in church or do I say, no, oh, no, no. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. Do I traumatize the Do I turn around and run the other basket? way? Yeah, and I just thought, this is just weird. And, of course, nobody was planning that event, thinking, let's make the old 40-year-old women with, you know, who are in elastic pants and have no children feel weird today. It just was kind of this miss. Mm -hmm. And so I got to where I just wouldn't go to church on Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. I'd go to Starbucks, get the biggest frappuccino they had, because I thought... Yeah. Jesus wanted us to do paleo. He wouldn't have said he was the bread of life. <laughs> so I would get as many carbs as I could and really grieve those days yeah. because I thought I have missed it. I believe he's a good God, but because I was a train wreck, I've missed that. I love that you're sharing this yeah. because I'm sure that there are a lot of our friends yeah. who oh, are yeah. listening right there, right now, yeah. who either have been or right. currently are. Or let, let me bring in another group of people, those women who have not felt called to be a mother. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And it felt like there's something wrong with them Absolutely. as well. And, you know, infertility in Scripture is God is so tender with infertility. Mm-hmm. And so whether you don't feel called or you haven't been biologically able right. or like me, you miss the window because there are just things in your life that took a long time to heal— I think that tends to be almost like the scarlet letter A. Yeah. It's just the scarlet letter, you know, negative M. You're not a mom. So you're you're kind of a second class citizen when it comes to to spiritual community. Yeah. And I'm like, golly jeepers, first mm-hmm. of all, scripture doesn't define a mother as one who has had children. Mm-hmm. Because there's an element of mothering, and especially for such a time as this, it is time for women to stand up and go. I will mother in the house of God. Yeah. To mother is to nurture. To mother is to be the source. Deborah, I was when we were all praying about this in Judges. There's this verse. Is it okay if I read a verse? Absolutely. Deborah's um, my favorite. So read oh, away. I love Deborah. I'm like, it's all I do not to get a Deborah tattoo on my calf. I love her. <laughs> Can we go and do it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll come along. I can't wait to meet her <laughs> in glory. I think she's going to wear leather pants like Lisa Bevere. Um, <laughs> Deborah, it's in Judges chapter 5, verse 7, and it says, The villagers ceased in Israel. They ceased to be. In other words, Israel is declining in hope, in power, in significance. And listen to what she says, because she always seems really humble. You know, the rest of her story, she is not, you just don't see her kind of with a Wonder Woman cape. But I love this verse. It says, Israel has ceased to be until I arose. Hmm. I, Deborah, arose as a mother in Israel. And you go, now that's yeah. <laughs> what it means to be a spiritual mama. It's right. not necessarily about having children, biological or adopted or step, or children that you walk alongside and parent. It's actually more about going, I am a source of spiritual nurturing. Mm -hmm. And whether I get to do it with my own kids, somebody else's kids, or the young women around me, Mm -hmm. God has called me to use the heart He's given me as a woman Mm -hmm. to mother the people around me. I think God was whispering to me long before I became an adoptive mother it's time for you to be a mom. Mm-hmm. It's time for you to stand up mm-hmm. in the house of God and be a mother and nurture where I've called you to nurture. So I am sensitive to women who feel less than because they are not literal or biological or adoptive mothers or stepmothers. I'm real sensitive because I know what that feels like. And I know the unintentional shame that sometimes mm-hmm. they carry, especially around Christians. Um, 
Can, but we, ta- can we talk about that yeah, real quick? Um, yeah. I would love to like put a pin there just because yeah. I've just been around so many young mothers or actually mm-hmm. let's start with women that are single, you yeah. know, like the pressure yeah. even. And like you said, we, we love the church, love the, love the bride. That's right. But sometimes historically the church has put so much pressure That's right. on young women of like, why aren't you dating yet? Yeah. Or why aren't you married right. yet? And right. then women start to believe either you do something like what I did and I got married way early, mm-hmm. you know, which I find out now, 20 years later, now that I'm, you know, divorced that mm. like, that was too soon. Right. <laughs> like, that was too soon, right. but the church pressured um, oh, yeah. because they, they thought that if I dated, then that meant I wasn't a virgin or that I right. was promiscuous. Like, right. so that pressure. Right. And then, then who are you dating? What right. are you doing? Ah, I know right. he's single. I know this is it. Right. And then, then you go to the whole, once people do get married, it's like the weekend they come back from honeymoon. Yeah. When you guys have a kid? Oh, when yeah. Oh, baby. That's oh, yeah. so true. It's yeah. just the pressure. It's not just the church, but I do, I would love, like, yeah. I love the fact that you're saying, you know, that you're sensitive to that because that yeah. that's a paradigm shift that needs to happen I, I within mean. the church. Amen. And I think we need to talk about it. I don't think we talk about it enough because you don't, you know, I, I, I just think there's there's a lot of inherent shame there. Yeah. But also people go, okay, theologically, God does talk about marriage a lot, and then he uses marriage as a metaphor, and then you've got Hosea and Gomer, and you've got, you've got all these metaphors of marriage, and it's like... There are metaphors of marriage, but he used those metaphors of marriage not to say this is the be-all, end-all, to say this is what you understand of mm-hmm. intimacy. Your relationship with me is even better than that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like I love Song of Solomon. Mm-hmm. I used yeah. to think I couldn't go there because right. it's, it's like, like Daniel the, it's stealing the, naughty, the Old it's Testament. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It's you know what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> but and it's it, so it was good. a holy <laughs> response yep. to Mesopotamian pornography. Mm-hmm. And so when you go, let's just call it what it is. Yeah. yeah. It was God going, we're going to redeem this. We're going to get this out of the gutter, but it's still super sensual. Mm -hmm. But you look at that book, and to me, the cool thing about that book is not how spicy their honeymoon was in chapter four, you know, blow on my garden. And you're like, (laughs) whoa, whoa. I don't even need to have an imagination to know what he's saying. (laughs) The bigger issue is when you go, okay, Jesus is the divine bridegroom. Mm -hmm. And in Song Solomon 4, 9, he says, with one glance of your eyes, you captured my heart. Mm -hmm. You go, oh my heavens. Mm -hmm. If as believers, we could even get the tiniest piece of that and go, I capture. I didn't get mm-hmm. that, and I think that that's of one of the things that messed me up so much with being single, and coming from a background of abuse. Is I thought I I just didn't think I was worth much. Yeah. So I would put my head down and be real dutiful for God, and then the fact that I didn't marry just kind of exacerbated that. It was like, oh well, then definitely. Yeah. I'm kind of a scratch and dent yeah. girl mm-hmm. because nobody picked me up and made me their very own. It took me so long to go. Oh, that's actually about me and Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The 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 God who breathes our universe into existence looks at me yeah. and says, One glance, Lisa, you captured my heart. I think if we got women to start there, yeah, that'd be so <laughs> women would choose better. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't have married when you were a little girl because right. you would have recognized, you know what, let me sit in his affection for a while until I'm baked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then once I'm through cooking with him, He's he's my main man. This is my security. This is who I am. So I'm going to be able to have a life partner. I'm going to be able to have a, a husband with skin on, but I'm not going to expect him to meet all my emotional yeah. needs. When I, I'm not going to think I'm oh, better. Go ahead. No, 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 I was just no, say no. when I was um, I had just graduated from college, and so I was single and feeling that pressure yeah. of why are you not married yet? You didn't leave college with a spouse, right? You right, did it wrong. Right, right. Get, did get the MRS degree. Exactly. Yeah. It was really <laughs> embarrassing. Um, but I read this book. My I think my mom gave it to me called The Bride, and so it was all about Song oh, of Solomon. Wow. And so I had this revelation when I was like 23 of exactly what you're saying. Yeah. I remember I remember where I was. I think it was in my bedroom and reading that. And it was this amazing visual image of, I'm going to share it with you. I was, I was in this hall and everybody was dancing. And from across the room, Jesus came in and he saw me. He locked eyes with me. And so I remember like him just walking to me and he saw nobody else. There was nobody else in the room, but me and him. And he said, will you dance with me? Mm. And Mm. that was a long time ago, but I still remember that. And I will go to that place when I feel like my heart is hurt or I feel alone or rejected. Aaron, I see nobody else right now, but you, and I'm going to walk towards you. And, um, Mm. it changed me because I didn't seek out a man. Right. 
to meet that place. Jesus already right. did that. That's right. Um, so uh, that's so this beautiful. This whole thing, it drives me nuts. when, And I, I've heard it in so many... Did y'all, when you were younger... I, I, Jay, I feel like you and I can kind of oh, go here. Good. She's talking to Did y'all to you. have to do the dating, waiting, and mating Oh, oh yeah, we did. Of course. I'm like, y'all, that's just gross. Can you call <laughs> oh, it something dating, else? Dating, waiting, and mating. Dating, waiting, and mating. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> um, I got it introduced at a conference. This wasn't too long ago. And the gentleman, I mean, he was real nice. But it was a singles conference. It's the one and only singles conference I've ever spoken at because I'm like, nope, I don't do pizza or (laughs) putt-putt. But um, he introduced me and trying to be kind. Sure, yeah. Sure. And and he said a few things about my background. Then he said, Lisa is a beautiful, single, celibate woman. And I was oh, like, wow. I'm <laughs> so sure. <laughs> you just said that in church. It's like, yo, this is so inappropriate. And I'm not shy. I mean, I'll tell you everything. I will lay it out there, except I will not tell you my real weight. I'll touch on that a little bit. You got to draw the line right somewhere. <laughs> you got to have one boundary. <laughs> but... I think we just, we have this, um, we've got it out of context. Mm. And when you get it back in context and you get that he is the lover of our soul, that's where we Mm. start. Then all this other stuff, um, the romance of it, you recognize, okay, that's going to fade. God is going to knit us together. You, yeah. We go into it with these expectations of the guy on the, you know, the knight shiny armor, the white horse. And I'm like, no, actually, that's Jesus. Yeah. Jesus yeah. is the one who rides the white horse. And when you're found by him, when you're kept by him, when you learn what it is to look into his countenance and go, he thinks I'm the greatest. I was in a seminary class just mm-hmm. a few weeks ago, and it was so cool. Y'all know this, but you know those things when you hear truth again and you go. Dang, I need to relearn that. That that was like so good. Well, our professor was, you know, talking about all this deep stuff that I can't pronounce. And he was talking about the infinite nature of the character of God. And we're all like, "Uh uh uh-huh, uh-huh, taking notes, (laughs) thinking it'll be on the test. And he said, what do you think? And there were only a few of us in his class. What do you think when you think of the infinite nature of God? And I'm thinking, how much Greek and Hebrew do I remember remember from my (laughs) master's course? Because I want to sound smart. And he goes, here's what I want you to know about the infinite nature of God. He said, because he is infinite... He doesn't max out when it comes to love. And then he came to each of us. We're all like in our 40s and 50s. And he stopped right in front of us and he said, Aaron, you're God's favorite. Hmm. And he said, because he's infinite, Jay, you're. God. And all of us, by the time, and like 50 year old men were weeping. Yeah. And that's what you just said. Yeah. God gave you a vision. And the rest of the room dissipated, and it was just you and him. That's actually biblically defensible. That's theologically yeah. sound. Yeah. Because he's infinite in nature, we are his yeah. yeah, And that's that yeah. desire yeah. of the woman's heart that we're that's talking right. about. Because what, one thing I love is how very, very different we all are yeah. as women. And it's yeah. really easy to throw everybody in the Hallmark movie bucket, you right. know, that we all want the same <laughs> right. thing. Yeah. Right. When you look at the desires of a woman's heart, mm-hmm. um, we do have that desire, like like you were saying, to do something meaningful in our life, mm-hmm. to whether you call that nurturing or leading or right. mothering, whatever it may be. We, right. we do all have that desire right. to leave a legacy mm-hmm. right. to, to right. sow into other people's lives. Right. But we also have holes in our hearts that only God can yeah. fill. And yeah. there's so many different things that we all try to fill that with. That's right. For, for you, Erin, I know that you wanted to be a mom for a long time before mm-hmm. you really saw anything mm-hmm. happen. And that was a hard thing for you, too. Yeah, it was really hard. It was, um, it was really difficult. And mm. I remember thinking, just like you, mm-hmm. I hated church on mm-hmm. Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. Terribly painful. Especially because every once in a while they'd make all of the mothers stand up. And so you're the one still sitting down. Right. Um, So I'd never felt so And didn't you feel like you failed? Yeah. And you had to, as if you had anything to do. Yes. With it. But yeah. Yeah. And I kept thinking like, did I, if I do this, then then God will give Mm. me what I want. Or if I, 
had done this, then I would have right. had a child. And the worst thing is the people who imply, I get this about marriage all the time. Lisa, when you stop wanting a husband, when Jesus fulfills you, oh, yes, then, then oh. he'll bring someone. And mm. I'm like, how old were you when you got married? I was 22. I'm like, oh, I bet you had amazing spiritual maturity. <laughs> <At 22. laughs> so I'm, I'm so sure mm. you're going to yeah. tell another believer, if you pray hard enough, I'm like, Goodness gracious, the damage we do it's so to true. make each other feel less than. Some yeah. of it is just, we live in a broken world. We do. It's marred by sin. Right. That's a we whole do. lot of it. I, um, I just... I, I just had so many conversations with God about it and would get angry yeah. at him. And, and the like you're saying, the holes in your heart, like, why am I not enough? Why yeah. why can't I have this thing that you? I feel like you put on my heart to have? Mm -hmm. And I've talked to so many women who have experienced the same thing. I got to have two mm. kids, but I still have friends who are waiting for babies oh, sure. for years. I read this amazing book and this woman was talking about how she wrote this book in the midst of her waiting because yeah. she's tired of not mm -hmm. getting to hear that good outcome. Sometimes right. we have to wait and it hurts. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. hard. What and my, my story is really different <laughs> because Me I, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mine was so different <laughs> because I was hyper sped into marriage. So mm -hmm. I was, I'm a pastor's kid. We have talked about it so much on the on the show, but when me and my ex actually got engaged, how old were you, Jay? I was 20 when I got okay. engaged, and I was Pain only um, a junior in college. And my my plan that I thought yeah. me and God had already figured it out yeah. was that I wasn't going to even think about getting married until after I finished grad school. Yeah, because that was I was like four. You like go four year college, two years for your master's, then I'll be ready to yeah. think about it. And you I'm know? sure you communicated that to God. I communicated like, that no. to God, and I communicated <laughs> yeah. to to my ex husband. I communicated <laughs> yeah. to my father, who none of them actually cared about what I thought that right. me and God had done. Right. So, <laughs> I, like, so when I actually got engaged, I told my ex at the time. I said we. We're, we won't get married until, uh, you know, we can have a long engagement. Of course, right. that was faux pas for the church world. They were oh, like, yeah. you guys are clearly having sex. You guys are clearly right. doing things unbiblical. Like, it's like, no, we're not. I'm actually in school. And I, I need him to show me that he can actually be something, right. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, and sure. I need to show myself that I can be committed to this right. relationship. Right. And so, but my dad actually pushed our marriage up. Mm. And we got married that summer. Um, oh, he announced gosh. that, yeah, it was it was sped ahead. And so I felt like I was kind of like stuck. Yeah. And then I felt- And a little oh, bit of a mascot. Oh my gosh, in yes, culture. yes. Yeah. And then I honestly, like the night of the honeymoon, it was like, what the heck am I supposed to do? Like, I'm not even ready for this. Like, yeah. I wasn't even thinking about this. This wasn't even on my radar for at least another you three, four talk years. You should that more. Because <laughs> I've had so many women in private go, it's, do I have sex? Do I have sex? Do I? And, and they want to honor God. And then all of a sudden this honeymoon and they're like, uh, yeah, do it. That's what I'm saying. Like, you go from a from a saint to a stripper. It's like I don't know how to do this. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, can we watch a movie? Like, yeah. what? Like, what? I find her body too. Yeah. So I'm like, what do I do? Well, then, like, literally, I had such a. And I'm sure we'll talk about this in some other episodes, but like. I had such a hard time with intimacy mm -hmm. and, you know, which mm -hmm. I'm on it in, in divorce phase. I'm owning right. things that, you know, what were the, right. what were some of the early years issues? You right. know, I was so afraid of it because, because of, yeah. I, I was told not to, it yes. was like the forbidden. Right. And so then to switch into that all of a yeah. sudden and yeah. then end up getting pregnant. Like my, for, after being pr married, maybe about three months, we found out I, I was pregnant for three months and I found out like, a few months or wow. later, because I was still in school and I was still a cheerleader right, in school. Right, like I was still moving. Right. So I was pregnant and I'm like, I thought it was like, God, what the, what in the world? Like yeah. I wouldn't trade my kid for anything, right. but I was so hyper sped into this world of now, like now mm -hmm. I'm in, I haven't finished college. And then I like my graduation. I remember my graduation. I was almost like nine months pregnant mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, this is not what I envisioned. Yeah. Like yeah. waddling across yeah. the stage, yeah. you know? And so my yeah. situation, even though I wanted my kid yeah. um, and I wanted her, but I just, I, I just wasn't prepared. I wasn't, yeah. it's feel, it felt like God was, I almost felt punished by him doing it so quickly. Right. Yeah. It was like, what in the world? Right. Like, what in the world? And that actually traumatized me. Right. Sure. Ended up having a couple of miscarriages after that. But then after that, I'm like, I don't even want any more. Like, yeah. it just really did a, did a number on me. So mm -hmm. my story, like hearing yours, I'm like, man, it's just but so different. But that's so real because we tend to go, oh, this is legitimate pain and not go, 
gosh, the woman who goes, we are really struggling financially, and I am fertile myrtle, and of course I'll love this child, yeah. but I, I wasn't expecting a sixth. Mm-hmm. And you, I see that too, see it, but yeah. they're yeah. afraid to say anything in small group because sure. people go, they are a blessing from the Lord in these quivers you in your grateful. ear. And you're like, well, of course I'm grateful, and I know God is sovereign, but some of this is hard. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. There's so much in all of this yeah. that that God knows our individual hearts, right. but we don't always know our hearts right. as well as God right. does, right. you know? For for me, I was um I, I was fiercely against any stereotypical thing of, <laughs> of a woman. I am shocker. Right <laughs> Such a shocker. You usually like to go with the flow. <laughs> So I, I was like, I, I knew that I did not have a mother's gene in my body anywhere. I was not going to do the motherhood thing. You know, it just, it wasn't Why, me. Ginger, did you have a stereotype that was like pink and pastel and lice and... You know, I think it was more, I had goals and I yeah. I knew what God was calling me to, Yeah, I thought. Yeah. Those are two different things. Yeah. So I was walking with the Lord. Yeah. But I really felt like he was asking me to do these things and that motherhood was not something he put in me. And I think a little bit of me thought I was broken. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't have that yeah. natural tendency that mm-hmm. other mothers do. I yeah. didn't I loved kids and I right. don't know how that works right. because I've always been drawn to kids and they're drawn to me. Yeah. But I didn't have that baby thing where like mm-hmm. let me hold your baby and I can't wait to have my own. I was I was like I I want to um nurture people in other ways. Right. I want to be a leader. I right. want to um, sponsor children who need help. I mean, right. You know, all these other well, things. culture told you that, that you were doing it the wrong way. Well, so exactly. therefore you shouldn't be a mother. Exactly. Right. So right. I dealt with a lot that of that what's wrong. Best. Yes. Right. Instead of first best. Yeah. yeah. And so in Psalm 37, where it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. It it was not at all when I started praying that prayer about getting what I wanted. Mm-hmm. It was about God putting the desires in my heart mm-hmm. that were in line with His Word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so after a while, my feelings about myself and our family and yeah. motherhood and all those things changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But what's so beautiful about it is it didn't take away those other things that yeah. drive to lead people yeah. and to see God work in different ways. You know, right. I still believe that every woman, whoever yeah. they are, God has put something specific in That's them. Right. Yep. And we don't all have to fit into the same Mm-mm. basket. Mm-mm. We don't have yeah. to look the same, do the same. No. And we, we can love ourselves no matter what because he does. Homogeny is unattractive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When you see the yeah. same thing, I'm like, well, that's just like Stepford Wise. That's lemmings. That's not, yeah. I think, becoming a mom older. Because when I was younger and I grew up in the South, there was that stereotype of kind of the Ozzie and Harriet, and it looked a certain way. And But getting older and seeing people like you, Seeing people like Lisa Bevere, who's you know wearing leather pants and swinging a sword at sixty, <laughs> seeing I thought, oh, there's not this narrow paradigm. These yeah. are women who are running hard towards Jesus and leading. Isn't it weird that you grew up in church, but you thought being a mother and being a leader were two separate things? I did. Well, which I did. Is crazy. And they're not. No. Uh-huh. And I think even for men, men need to know that too. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's there's right. There's something about being a leader that you have to be able to love and nurture the people in your right. care. It's mm-hmm. called being a shepherd. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's how God sets it up. Yeah. That's right. So a- as women, there as women, there are so many different things in our hearts, so many desires. I, I got a message from someone that really touched me and she was talking mm-hmm. about being in that place where they had tried to have children for a very long time. Yeah. And it didn't happen. It still hasn't happened. Mm-hmm. And coming to where she was at a place of peace in yeah. that, yeah. knowing that it didn't mean she was incomplete, mm-hmm. yeah. that there there were things that God was doing in her life that mm-hmm. were good and teaching her through that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important that, that yeah. we look at all the different facets of yeah. womanhood. My, I was talking to my sister yesterday, and she and I are four years apart. She's younger than I am, but she's married, and people ask her all the time, when are you going to have a baby? And, mm. and they don't want kids. And that has been mm-hmm. hard for her not because she doesn't want them, they're comfortable with their decision, but that's not, like we were talking about earlier, that's not acceptable. Right. Like there's something mm-hmm. wrong that that's not, right. like, why don't you? And they'll say, 
to my mom, oh, I'm so sorry, you can have grandkids. And it makes mm-hmm. me frustrated for her mm-hmm. because she's not a second rate woman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She is amazing, and God oh, has yeah. put so much in her, and she's so oh, yeah. strong, and she has so many gifts. I can't wait to see how God uses them, not because she's going to be a mother, right. but because of whatever her story is. So when we were talking about this, I had this realization that our stories are so unique. Mm-hmm. My story is different than yours and yours mm-hmm. and yours and everybody's. And God loves us so much, infinitely, like, like right. you were saying, right. that his story is unique for you mm-hmm. and me, and they mm-hmm. are going to look so different. But his heart for us is good. Yeah. 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 And what so you and I were talking about earlier, the goodness of who God is. <gasps> He's so good, even amidst the pain of the woman oh, waiting good. for yeah. years, or the woman who doesn't want kids and feels like she's doing something wrong, or whatever yeah. situation you are. Yeah. That's how good he is. And the different types of healing he's mm-hmm. done in yes. each one of our mm-hmm. lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That that whole, that healing that we all need in one way or another. Right. Yeah. yeah. That I'm so glad he's there for every aspect this. of it. Yeah. Because I think even y'all talking about it will help dis- dispel the myth for some people who do think there's one way to do this mm-hmm. Christian womanhood thing yeah, right. Yeah, that's good. And and everything else is a you know is kind of a pale imitation. Mm. But if I do it right, I'm going to be married by this age and mm. have two point three kids, and I'm going to cross stitch my Bible verses, and I'm going to and there's there's still <laughs> kind of a pretty narrow mm-hmm. paradigm. Well, you do have to do the cross stitch thing. Uh, that one is well, in then the I'm Bible. Going straight to the hot place. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm about as domestic as wallpaper. I cannot cross stitch. But you know, even there, Ginger, when I did become a mom. Because I made a conscious choice in my 40s, probably mid-40s. Um, I would read, y'all have read it a million times. You may have cross-stitched it. You know the C.S. <laughs> Lewis quote about if you, want, if you don't want to get hurt, if you don't want to experience the pain, to not love anything. Right. Mm-hmm. Don't even love a pet. Don't wrap your... And, but then at the end of this quote, it's one of the most powerful quotes on love. He says, at the end of it, your heart will be locked up tight in a coffin and the real um, the real grief is that you won't be hurt, but your heart will be impenetrable. Mm. And I remember reading that for the umpteenth time. I have a platonic crush on C.S. Lewis. And I <laughs> thought, I've got a choice. I may never get married or be a mother, but I have a choice to either protect my heart and keep it from getting hurt, and then my heart will get hard, mm-hmm. or I can lead with God says to worship with my heart and my mind so I can press into the lives of my friends' kids. I can press into yeah. other people knowing, yeah, there's going to be missteps along the way. Sometimes it'll be hard, but I'm, I, I just am not going to kind of cocoon my heart yeah. because people hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. I had a guy at a church once I was interviewing to be on a church staff. I ended up going on this church staff, but... Uh, one of the elders in the in the interview meeting said, Lisa, I'm just wondering, this is almost verbatim when he said, I can remember it, should have punched him in the throat, but he said, Lisa, <laughs> you know, I'm just wondering, sit your single. I mean, what can you teach our women? I mean, we all have wives. If you're single and not a mom, how can you lead what? them spiritually? Oh, my goodness. And he wasn't mean. He Maybe truly, we'll punch him in the throat. <laughs> uh, poor fella. Um, but he truly was thinking, what do you, yeah. have, to what do you have to offer? Just a serious question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember being a little discombobulated. And, I, and of course, you don't want to react. You want to respond. And I said, well... I, I think the gospel extends far beyond the bounds of mm-hmm. of marriage. Yeah. And I believe, because I believe everything in here, cover mm-hmm. to cov- cover, is applicable to the human experience, whether you're married, single, not. But, but you have to make those decisions, and you have to even now, as an older single mom, adoptive mom, yeah. transracial family, and I travel— I can't tell you how many times other moms oh, tell me have shamed it. me. They're like, yeah. well, we're having the thing. And I was like, well, my my, I'm not going to bring gluten-free. I'm going by Whole Foods. Here's <laughs> what I'm going to bring. Because I get to go be with my friends in St. Louis tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm not going to stay up all night. And I actually have a job because I bring home the bacon and our family. Mm-hmm. And I sometimes you just have to go, I'm just going to fly the flag God has given me yeah. and do it with kindness, but go, no, that's not my lane. Thank you, Lisa. That's your lane. Thank you. Because I, I felt so much of that condemnation. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, not so much 
you know, for a long time. But right. but when my kids were little, oh yeah, that I wasn't doing it right. I wasn't oh, doing yeah, it like all the other right. Christian moms, and it it hurts. And oh, yeah. yeah, I really had to learn yeah. to get through. A yeah. lot of that. So yeah. thank you for bringing I, that up. I remember that too, <laughs> because I was fresh out of college having my mm-hmm. daughter. I remember f- feeling like, and I was a, you know, a marketing exec, mm-hmm. and I remember going to the bathroom and, and pumping. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Humiliating, I'm right? laughing because in the middle of the work day, and you hear, Erin mm-hmm. used to call it going to church. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She'd come in, she goes, I'm going to church. <laughs> I'll be right, I'll be right 30 minutes. I remember that, and I remember like, or like being, feeling like I shouldn't be, have to do that because I'm like, right. how could I possibly be mm. nursing a kid and working, and why would I be here? And I remember one time sitting so long that I engorged, and then in my little tan suit, having like two Aww. big old oh, wet circles pumpkin. because I didn't go do it. Right. You know, because I was like, right. I'm just oh, no. forced through it. But I'm just saying, right. like, the shame of that yeah. and then the, yeah. the thought of even my mom having these great experiences with my kid because she was watching her at the beginning, right. you know, and I was like, right. I feel terrible. And I remember quitting that job. It's right. hard. I quit that yeah. job because yeah. I just couldn't, I couldn't, I felt like less than a mom for yeah. pursuing my career yeah. and, and leaving my uh, kid with my mom. real. I, I'm so glad. Again, I'm such a slow learner. And I had a lot of friends who were really honest with me because I had so many women. When I was bringing Missy home from Haiti, finally I lost two adoptions before by the grace of God. I got to bring Missy home from Haiti. Her first mama died when she was two. Mm. And, you know, I was just over the moon. But I had all these people before I brought her home. They were like, so you're not going to travel anymore. And I was like, oh, you know, you're like, I— I didn't know my ministry calling was going to be off the table when I became a mom, but that is what everybody seems to be saying. And if it hadn't been for Chris Kane and Priscilla Shire, mm-hmm. both of whom pulled me aside and they were like, Lisa, your life is not going to be conventional. And everybody's going to try to put you into this kind of conventional, conservative church mold of what yeah. a mother is. They were like, yeah. you had a calling on your life and God doesn't revoke that calling when you become a mom. He will give you the grace yeah. to do both. You're not going to do both perfectly, but Missy will probably be a kid who loves to travel and loves a church. And mm-hmm. I was like, and it scared me because I thought, oh, I'll do anything. I can't believe you let me be a mama. I'll, I'll just work at Target. I'm strong. I can stack boxes. Because I thought yeah. that's what I was supposed right? to do. Yeah. And they just, both of them said, it's not going to be comfortable and you are not going to fit. And you do what God has called you to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if he's clapping that's your audience. Yeah. But you're probably yeah. in the South. I'm very conservative theologically. They're like in the South, in Southern culture, and Orthodox culture, there's not a whole lot of templates for what you do. Yeah. So they're like, don't expect everybody to pat you on the back. You run your race yeah. and you I, listen I to the Holy love Spirit. That. That's so good. Oh, I learned so much about about Philippians 4.13, because we grab that scripture. I can do all All things things. through Christ who gives me strength. And so as women, then we get that, I can do everything, (laughs) and I won't drop any balls, and it's through Christ, it's not me, but I can do all of it. And I learned so strongly through that, that it's, it's God saying, I will I will give you all things. I will That's give right. you strength in all things. But that doesn't mean you will have so all good. things. Mm-hmm. That's so good. And so learning who God had for me to be right. was really right. important in that. What things right. do you pull out of your life? Absolutely. What things does He ask you to focus on? And for a season. Yes. There's yeah. some bonds right. that you go, I've got to set this aside. Right. For the next two or three years while I do this, that doesn't mean it's jettisoned forever. Then when this yeah. shifts, when they start to drive, okay, no. I have more time now because right. I'm not taxi mama. When they, there's just talk when you're not pumping, you mm-hmm. do have more time. I, I think that's where, goodness gracious, as Christian women, we have got to give each other more latitude oh, yes. and go, it, yes. you don't have to look like me and yeah. how you do it. And how can I help you? Let's kind of blow the paradigm and make it God's paradigm, Deborah led Israel. Yeah. You go, I'm sure there was some Yehu on the side going, did you make your husband a hot meal tonight? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Deborah probably said, no, I went through Chick-fil-A. <laughs> and so I think sometimes we have to go, let's just kind of go, what really is God's perspective? Yeah. Yeah. And what kind of baggage are we saddling on each other saying, this is God's plan for yeah. you? I'm so glad you're saying that. And I think as, as a young mom represented here, we need to hear those things mm-hmm. because we feel the pressure, like you're mm-hmm. saying, of being home with my young kids 
but I am called to this job. I'm called to be here, but I'm not a good enough mom at home because I send my kids to preschool or whatever and they, mm-hmm. whatever, but all those sorts of pressures that are so prevalent right, right now. Yeah. And we the need same to is hear. the opposite for those moms who are at home That's exactly. and they're Why getting that right? opposite feeling. You That's should right. be doing something yes. else. Why are you not helping right. provide for your family? We're all doing the best we can. Right. So for you to tell us right. you're doing great, keep doing what you're doing, do f- go where God is calling you. And right. that is all that matters. That is, there's so much right. freedom in that. Yeah. Right. yeah. I want to, Oh, it's something that it, just Ooh. struck me. Here we go. What, here we go, Jay. Here what is it? Okay, so <laughs> I'm doing something right this moment that my 18 year old daughter is not thrilled about. Oh, what's and that? So I, mm. I am not to her. I'm not a good mother mm. oh. <laughs> at the moment mm-hmm. because, um, like I've shared this a bunch. I've gone through a divorce recently, mm. and she's 18, going to college. Well, we thought she was. Yeah. She wants to take a gap year, but she's decided to do something that her and her dad decided that I'm. I support her completely, but I'm just not in a place where I feel like she's ready for that particular mm-hmm. jump. Mm-hmm. And I told her a couple months ago, I said, if you go this route, I love you. I support you. Go and do what you're going to do. But I can't be a part of that. Right. You know, that. And so right. that's what I have peace about. That's why I still have peace about. But because she still needs my help with these things, my natural you know, mom instinct is to like jump in and help her, but I know I'm not supposed mm-hmm. to. Yeah. And so she is f- beyond angry with me mm-hmm. and like <laughs> with, not talking to me because of it, you know, and then I feel the guilt of, of making that decision, putting my foot down. Um, but I also see on this, on social media, all of the parents that are taking their kids to school and decorating yeah. the dorms mm-hmm. and doing all the stuff. And yeah. I only got one kid. I only yeah. have one. And so I'm like, yeah. this is my, my shot, you know? Yeah. And so then all this guilt with being a mom that's trying to figure out if she wants her hair yeah. short, long or whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. like just trying to know. keep moving after divorce. And, but I'm like, am I being selfish? Am I, do-? but I, I feel a peace in God that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. She made her decision. This is my very first real tough love mm-hmm. yeah. situation. It's hard. But it's just, it's yeah. the pressures of being, yeah. A mom, yeah. and and it can be gut wrenching. It's yeah. so hard, and I'm like, yeah. I want to post a pic of me going to Target with my kid to find some bed sheets, yeah. but I can't because yeah. she's angry with me because of all the things that are going on. But I had to put my foot down. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's beautiful in what you're sharing, and you didn't ask my opinion, but. It's fun to be with y'all. Oh, I love it. I love y'all. I'm watching you from the cheap seats. It's it's just a gift to be here. But you are really consistent in the way you speak and the way you minister. There's just this, all of y'all have this consistency. You know, y'all don't look like EKGs the way you live your life. When I was bringing Missy home from Haiti, I've been in Christian counseling for years to kind of keep it between the lines, the answers are in God's Word. Yeah. If it's, I'm trying to apply it to a place where I was wounded, I can be such a, just such a dweeb. And so it helps me to have an older, wise counsel to mm-hmm. go, here's where you need to go to walk right with the Lord. So I did a lot of a lot of counseling pre-becoming an older adoptive mom. And my counselor was talking to me one time about love. And she said, Lisa, she said, what will it look like for you to love Missy? And I was like, well, I'll just, I'll love her. And she was like, but love? And I said, yes, there's three Greek terms for love. It's <laughs> like, all my the love very official is the knowledge. Answer. And she said, but what will it look like? And I was like, well, I'll, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to affirm her verbally if that's her. Lo-. Like, I'm, I was lost. She might as well have asked me, you know, I dated a physicist once. That was exciting. Um, yeah, I read a book, Physics for the Rest of Us. But that's what it felt like. I felt so foolish when she was saying, what will that look like? And she said, you know how to do this. You just don't see the profound simplicity of it. She said, love for Missy a child who lost her parent when she was a baby, who's been in an orphanage in Haiti, who's very sick. Love for her will be consistency and safety. And I went, Mm -hmm. oh. And then I went, but Lynn, I travel. I'm always in different cities. And she goes, you are consistently in different cities. You are consistently. And I was like, that's how I love my kid. Hmm. I'm consistent. Yeah. I'm consistent with discipline. I'm consistent with my personality. I'm a verbal affirmer. I'm consistent 
with, and I thought, oh, it's like it took all this pressure off. So when you go, I don't know if I'm even doing it right. I'm like, you're doing it beautifully because you're being consistent. Even by having a boundary, you said, I love you with all my heart. I'm still your mama. This is how I've been for 18 years. You know, my heart for you. I think, again, that's where we have to do it as unto the Lord instead of as unto Instagram or TikTok. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like everybody else is doing stuff. Missy is different than most of my friend's kids. She and I've got this beautiful kid from Haiti. She doesn't look like my other friends. She's socially, there's some places where she's playing catch up. And I'm just determined to have her be exactly who God made her. Yeah. And it means our lives look a little different. And I don't always get the, I just don't always fit in what a mom Mm -hmm. looks like Mm -hmm. in this season of life. Um, But I think being, I mean, 60s right around the corner for me. The one thing I have is I look back at the consistency, the consistent faithfulness of God in my life. And I go, that's what he's teaching me to do. It's just, I'm going to keep walking. Eugene Peterson says obedience is a long walk in the same direction. Hmm. That's what you've done with your baby girl. You have locked, yeah. walked a long way in the same direction beautifully. You it's know, what we all need to hear. One right? verse I just want to share real fast that I think I want to share with you. And it would I think it applies to all of us women in general in the heart of what God has for us. Um, but to you specifically, Psalm 46, 5, God is yeah. with her. She will not be moved. Mm-hmm. That's right. That is who you are. That's and right. that's what you're walking out right now. That's right. God is within you. You will not be moved. That's you're right. consistent and you're consistent right. with your daughter. And sh- God is with her. She will yeah. not be moved. Yeah. God's heart is for her too. Right. Yeah. And that girl, she's going to be fine. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I believe it. I just, I believe it. And I, I receive all of that. And, yeah. and I, but I do know it's, it's real when oh, you know, yeah. when, oh, yeah. when, you, when you in the different yeah. phases, of course, you know, like everybody has different phases of yeah. of how they, you know, feel guilt or shame with yeah. their mothering and their choices yeah. that they're making. And yeah. I've told Taylor my whole time, I was like, hey, this is me, me and God right here. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never had a Taylor at this age. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. I would always say, I'm like, I'm kind of guessing. So there's yeah. always <laughs> something new for us. We got to figure out. Always, but that's why I'm, I'm like, I appreciate this group um, of, mm-hmm. of ladies, like we're all different, and mm-hmm. I love having people in different phases, yeah. you know, and having Joyce and having, you know, yeah. just to hear those different perspectives on uh, on motherhood and, right. and like, okay, this is what happens at eighteen because she's crazy, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> she gonna get better, you know, like, and then I'm all mobile because I see, you know, I see Ginger and her girls at, yeah. as adults with their her grandkids, like. Face FaceTiming, you know, with little Elsie with a little hat on and diaper, you know, so it's like I know. I, you see that and it's yeah. still it's hopeful to say. Mm-hmm. And that, that, yeah. that area that I thought I was broken in, that yeah. area that I thought I did not have what I needed to do it has been one of the greatest joys of my life. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Good at it. And so You're that's so just good at it. How God is. It's yeah. just God knows who yeah. we are and how He's created us and our weaknesses mm-hmm. and comes in and helps in those areas yeah. that we just never imagined right. we could be fulfilled in. Right. Mm-hmm. So it, it just says so much about who God is. Yeah. yeah. So that consistency, that giving it over to Him yeah. is not easy for us. It's not easy yeah. for me, believe me. Yeah. yeah. But it it really is the key to all of it. It is. Yeah. And, it, well, and I, I love that plumb line you laid of if God is in her, within her, she won't be moved. Because he's not saying if God is within her in this in this framework. Right. It's yeah. if God is in her and she's a leader and she feels called with this and God is in her and she's now doing it by herself. And if God is in her and it took a while, if you have, and you, it's like... He's not saying God is within her if she does it exactly like this. I go, how cool is that? Because it means for the women who are watching right now who go, yeah, I'm totally with Jay. Like, God gave me this brain I'm supposed to use, and I want to work, but I want to be with my kids. But it's, it's, I'm like, 
then you do what he's given you to do, and you do it with all your heart, and you know that you can't have it all. I hate that old commercial. Remember that perfume commercial? Yes. She can fry it up in a pan. She can never, never. I'm like, <laughs> no. nobody can do all that. I she really can never can't. cook anything in uh, a pan. You can't fry so. it in a pan. No, <laughs> no, no. Listen, I think drive through I think mm-hmm, ordering oh. is a great spiritual gift. <laughs> it. But I also think, y'all, we just, we we think Proverbs 31 is a real thing. Yeah. We don't realize that's actually, Hebrew hyperbole. There was not one woman. That was a mm. composite mm. of several gifts. And we've said, well, you can. I'm like, right. there was no one Jewish woman who did that. I'm like, study your Bible. <laughs> because we've, we've made it too hard, I think, for other women instead of saying, man, yeah. like I'm listening to you and going, I'm calling you in six years when Missy's 18 because you'll help me. But Missy and I will look different than you and Taylor. Yeah. But you're going to go, Lisa, this is what God did. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. also Psalm 8411, no good thing yeah. does he withhold. Yeah. From him whose walk is upright, I always paraphrase or say, or for from her who often stumbles. Yeah. If mm-hmm. we're walking toward Jesus, we're not going to miss it. Yeah. We may drop a few balls. We're not going to do it perfectly. But he is, he, his... His consistency is what we stand on. Yeah. His faithfulness is what we stand on. And yeah. I do think it's important to bring back what you said about the C.S. Lewis quote about the cocooning of the heart, because it's easy when you have those, you know, the yeah. whole, like the hope deferred makes the heart sick, yeah. you know, like you're, if you allow yourself to, and, and this is why people say like, how do you keep, I get a lot of messages like, how do you keep moving? I'm like... I don't, I just make yeah. a choice that mm-hmm. God, we got to do this. Like right. I will not allow my heart right. to cocoon. I will right. not allow myself to sit in a dark room and, and be upset or sad because this happened or this, because that, that can go, that can apply not just to motherhood, but oh, to yeah. divorce right. or to any kind yeah. of disappointment, yeah. anything yeah. that your heart has desired that you haven't gotten yet. Yeah. Like you're, you can allow yourself to get in that dark space where you say like, I'm going to have my mm-hmm. heart hardened. But the key is to keep that art, heart heart pliable and keep right. it yeah. open right. and, and run towards God as he's running towards you. Like, right. I think that's yeah. super, super important. What a great yeah. conversation. Thank you all oh so God. much. And we're going to end with Joyce in just a minute, praying over all of us as women and that. moms. And so just a, a great prayer. But while we have our friend Lisa Harper, mm-hmm. Lisa is going to be one of our special guests at our 40th anniversary I women's conference it. next year. I can't believe it's it. It's going to be such a fun party. It it's was so, so fun when I got to be with y'all a couple of years ago. I, I kind of am waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm like, surely y'all think you've invited Lisa Bevere or Lisa Turkhurst. <laughs> like, I don't even want to tell y'all it's hard for I'm afraid I'll get disinvited. It was awesome. It's going to be so fun. It's one of my so favorite fun. experiences. And that I was so fun when you back. were with us, too. It, uh, it was amazing. It was just amazing. God shows off at y'all's events. Hmm. And it's like his he does. presence He's good. is palpable. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, to get us all warmed up, we have a women's conference coming up really soon that you can register. It's coming up October 8th and 9th. It is the Love Life Women's Conference 21, and it is going to be so handy and life-changing. Mm. I love putting those two things together, yeah. handy yes. and, and life-changing. Changing. It's awesome. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's virtual and you can be part of all of us. We're going to have a talk it out there. So it's going to be so fun. Um, with Dr. Henry Cloud, oh. and then <laughs> oh, he's amazing. <laughs> so we're we're just going to have a great time. So many wonderful speakers, great worship music. Please go online to register. Go to joycemeyer.org slash lovelife21 to register. And we also have a free resource for you that we would love for you to get. Just just to add some more of God's word to your life. That really is the key to everything. Yeah. Is digging into the Word of God, knowing who He says you. You are as a woman, as a parent. Um, so it's called Help for Parents. It's a free download that you can get this booklet um, at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. Love you all. Thank you so love very you much too. for love being here with oh, us. Thank you for Thanks letting for me be with y'all. It's been a gift. And you and your sweethearts too. And we will see you next time. Right now, here is Joyce with that prayer over your life. Father, we love our kids so much. And really, no matter what they do, we still love them. And we're grateful to know that you love us that same way. And so we're asking you today, we're asking you to go after these kids, to not let them be comfortable in their sin. 
I pray that you would surround them with people that are Christians that are the real deal that they can look up to and admire and want to be like them. Some of these kids probably feel hopeless. They may be addicted to some kind of substance and they feel there's no way to get out. So I ask that you would give them just even a spark of hope. Because where there's hope, there can always be victory. And Father, our new confession is, I'm expecting my child to be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and serve God with their whole heart. I'm expecting God to do something amazing in their life. So we thank you, Lord, for releasing angels and the power of the Holy Spirit and for rescuing them and bringing them out of darkness into the light. And I pray that you would give us as parents the wisdom to know when to say something, when to be quiet. When to pray, keeping our confession in line with our prayers. Let each of us be great examples to our children and not just preach to them something that we're not doing ourselves. If there's damage that's been done in these relationships through things that have happened in the past that maybe even the parents haven't handled properly, I know I did that. You are the God of restoration and you can restore all of that. So I pray for all those breaches to be healed and I thank you God for building bridges in these relationships and bringing families together in peace and unity. Let us be awesome Christian families serving you and being an example to the world. In Jesus' name, we rebuke Satan. He is not gonna have our children. We claim them, we surround them with our prayers, and we put a covering over their life today, and we say that they are coming into the kingdom. Amen. All right. Go get today's free resource at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. And while you're at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out, you can also review previous episodes, get to know us a little better, and sign up for our friends list to receive exclusive content. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast.